As of right now, though, we want to take you live to a press conference in Denver. Russell Wilson joining the Denver Broncos and being introduced today after 10 seasons with the Seahawks. Well, uh, first of all, it's been a, a definitely a whirlwind uh, over the past several days, but um, it's been an amazing journey. First of all, I want to thank the Denver Broncos just for the opportunity. You know, every day I wake up, you realize that, um, you know, playing this game is a gift. It's a gift. And uh, to be able to do what I love every day um, is something special. So I, I'll never take that for granted. Um, it's truly a gift. And there's been amazing players here in this organization, you know, some of the greatest of all time. Uh, you know, I know John Elway's in the back. I, I used to watch him when I was a young kid, and, and uh, my dad used to always show me clips of him making plays, you know, two-sport athlete, you know. He was the epitome of two-sport athletes. He's, think about Peyton Manning, um, some, you know, the, arguably one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Uh, there's been some greats along the way, and then other players as well that I've gotten to play uh, in my journey too as well, and some guys that are on our team that are some of the best in the game. Um, so it's, it's a true honor to be here and to be a Denver Bronco. Um, you know, it also means a lot to me. Um, I'll give you a little background. It means a lot to me because, um, you know, I got drafted in baseball June 8, 2010 by the Colorado Rockies. And uh, <clears throat> the next day, my dad passed away. And it was one of the hardest days of my life because it was the highest of the highest, the lowest of the lowest within 24 hours. And how the Colorado, Rock Colorado Rockies organization took, took hold of me, took care of me. Uh, Billy Schmidt, some other great, uh, Jay, uh, a lot of other great people uh, in this community uh, really took me on their wing, and, and it was it really meant a lot to me along the along the way, knowing that it was even though it was a hard time, people supported. I had I remember my locker being between Todd Helton and Tu Lewitsky and and some other greats and um, Matt Holiday, different people, Cargo. So I was fortunate to be around some amazing people, and this city has meant a lot to me even from back then. Um, but obviously, there's another city that has meant a lot to me, meant the world to me over the past 10 years of my life, and that's uh, Seattle. You know, Seattle Seahawks have been everything to me. I was drafted on April 27th of 2012, and my dreams really started becoming true then. And uh, there was there's really a few key people in that journey. Um, first of all, obviously, the late Paul Allen, uh, who gave me the opportunity, who gave everybody there an opportunity to, to, to play the game. And uh, he's done so much in, in the world. And and uh, obviously Jody, too, and the two of them have meant the world to me over the past 10 years, my family, Sierra and I, um, you know, so uh, it's, it's meant a lot. Uh, obviously, Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll was, the, was, was a coach that uh, always chew, chewing his bubble gum, always, always believed in the fourth quarter comebacks with me, um, a guy that uh, I always believed in, too, as well. And we've had amazing, amazing moments, amazing conversations, amazing days together, amazing, I mean, just in so many amazing times. And um, so, you know, Pete, obviously, yeah, he's a Hall of Fame coach, in my opinion. He's been an amazing person along the way with me. Um, and then there's obviously John Schneider, who, who's the guy when I was playing at University of Wisconsin, the Big Ten. He, he was chopping it up in the bar with my brother after we won and uh, beat Michigan State. And uh, he was chopping up with my brother in the bar and, and, uh, and uh, talking about how, you know, he, you know, he would one day maybe want me to be his quarterback. And so uh, those two guys have meant the world to me. And then I have so many uh, amazing other people, obviously coaches along the way um, that have meant the world to me. Um, from off of the coordinators like Bevel and, and Shoddy to obviously Shane Waldron, who I think is a, an amazing mind. Um, the quarterback room. Uh, I remember T Tater, Coach Tater, you, you know, he taught me about the daisy chain of life. You know, he taught me about how, you know, how, how to take every day and simplify the game. And that was a beautiful thing for me. Uh, so many other great people along the way. Um, you know, I have a long list that I could go through in terms of coaches, but um, you know, our, our, our rooms where we'd have our prayer sessions and just talk about life, not just the game plan, but talk about life. Dave Canales, Austin Davis, a lot of other people, um, the quarterbacks I've played with. Uh, I know Geno Smith, you meant a lot to me along the way, so many others. Um, but anyways, I, I think that that room was always a special room. And uh, it was always because it was about the work and about people. And I think that we always took dedication to that. But I also have had some amazing teammates too as well. Um, you know, I think about the first day I ever walked into the and when I was first draft. We had the rookie symposium, and the first thing they do, they walk onto stage and they tell you, "What does the NFL stand for?" And we're like, "National Football League," and we're all looking left and right, and no, it's not for long. And uh, I remember Robert Turbin and I uh, being roommates and talking about how one day uh, we were going to break records, and one day we were going to do special things and win a Super Bowl, and maybe hopefully more. Um, to other amazing teammates like DK Metcalf who I think is one of the best in the game, but one of my best friends. I think about just the, obviously the stuff on the field, but also, also the stuff behind the scenes where, you know, we're sitting in my office and just chopping up, laughing him, you know, and talking life and everything else. To Tyler Lockett, the amazing toe-tap catches and the amazing things he's done uh, along the journey and just how, you know, he's, he, he's, he's a really a poet along the way too. So amazing things that he's, he's done. Um, to other great friends that I've played with, whether it's short or long, 
guys like Jimmy Graham that meant a lot to me um, in difficult times, you know, and uh, he, he really meant a lot to me along the way too, um, you know, and then there's so many other guys like Dwayne Brown, you know, I think he's one of the best, best competitors I've ever gotten to play with, one of the greatest guys I've ever been around. Uh, you know, you're talking about people staying in the locker room long, being there late. Uh, that guy would be there, you know, every every day, every every moment, uh, to the last minute, to the last hour. And uh, you know, I love playing with him. Uh, and there's so many other guys along the way. Um, it's all the Super Bowl team that I was able to play with, um, you know, and, and everything else. Those guys that would compete at the highest level. And that's how you learn how to practice. That's how you learn how to play at the highest level. And um, you know, so those guys too. There's a long list of those guys as well. Um, but then I also think about the people in the building, um, the people in the building that I've been able to uh, be with every day, the people that go unseen, uh, EK, uh, the, you know, one of the best equipment managers in all of sports, but one of the best people you could ever meet um, that helped me from day one um, to, to other people like uh, Mo Kelly, who, who was the heart and soul of that, of that building, the guy who keeps people together, who guys who keeps, keeps believing in the best things. Um, to the trainers, obviously, Strick and Sam. Um, those guys, you know, when you're dinged up and you got to play and you're going no matter what it takes because you, 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 you want to do whatever it takes to win, uh, those guys helping you out. Um, to the strength staff as well. Um, to so many other people that I've, that I've been along the journey, Danny and, and Ivan and Coach Carlisle and just people that I've been around. I've been fortunate to be around some amazing people. And I think that uh, what I know about this organization here in Denver Broncos, it's about amazing people. Uh, same thing in Seattle was amazing people, and so I never take that for granted. Um, I, I think I think this is the city of Seattle, obviously um, the Twelves, because uh, you know without you guys, you know it, it would be tough. But I think the Twelves have meant a lot to me along the way because of the journey, and um, you know, and then ultimately uh, all the kids we got to see. See, you know, Sierra sitting up here in the front, but you know, our, our foundation with Wyandotte Youth Foundation, all the kids we were able to see and impact in that community really meant, meant the world to us every day. Even on the hardest days when stuff is tough, to be able to know that you can be an inspiration for somebody. In this game, God gave me a right hand for some reason to be able to throw it deep to Tim Patrick back there or, or Court Sutton or, or, or KJ or anybody, whoever it may be. Um, you know, he gave me a gift to be able to throw the ball. And, uh, but I used that gift to hopefully inspire somebody else. Um, and then ultimately, um, I just thank God. I thank, I thank God just for giving me the opportunity to play this game that I love. Um, it's an amazing gift. It's an amazing, amazing gift every day. And then um, I have a few people up here in the front. You know, Charlie Martin is the one who blocked in the backside for me against the Tennessee Titans in my first preseason game. I dove in the end zone, and that's when everything, the kind of party kind of started uh, and caught a touchdown against the Kansas City Chiefs for me to my mom. Obviously, Mom, you've been uh, a rock star for me, just keeping my faith. You know, she sends me a she sends me a scripture every every morning. I mean, it's this long, you know, and uh, and I love it because it's really about it's really about just being able to to live with a full heart every day in, in the spirit. And then my brother, you know, in the backyard where we used to get to be able to play and battle and battle and battle. You taught me how to compete. You taught me how to win. You taught me how to how to go. Um, and then to my beautiful family, um, you know, uh, Sierra, you know, I love you. Uh, you're, you're a queen in every way. You've helped me uh, in every way in this transition over the past 10 days, which has been difficult, but also been amazing. And uh, in the Bible, it talks about old wineskins versus new wineskins. This is the new wineskins. This is living in the new. And I'm excited to live in the new. Um, the old was really good, but man, I can't wait for what's new. And um, I'm grateful for you. And then future, you know, man, you're my guy, you know, you hitting home runs, winning trophies, running home run, yeah, <laughs> home run derbies. And and, and dominating flag football to Siena, being the little princess that you are to win. I don't know where he is. He's probably scrambling around. That's how, that's how you learn my scramble modes. Um, but um, I, the last thing I want to say is just to the Denver Broncos, the Broncos country. This is a, this is a gift for me. I'm, I'm grateful to be around such amazing people. Obviously, uh, George, over the past few days getting to know you, um, it's been a whirlwind, but it's been amazing knowing that uh, you're about winning us just as much, and you're about these guys and helping all of us players and this whole organization be at the highest, highest level. Uh, and that's what it's about. Um, and, and then the rest of the executive team, obviously, Joe, Joe I've been able to meet you. I, I mentioned uh, John Elway as well. But then Coach Hackett, it's been a joy to get to know you, uh, your passion, your energy, um, your focus, your, 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 your desire to be around, um, around, around the best. You know, you told me, telling me stories about your dad, you know, being, you know, one of the best, if not the best quarterback coach of all time um, and, and coaching some of the best and you growing up being 12 year old, being around Joe Montana and such. Those kind of stories are inspiring to me because I love I love the history of the game and uh, Broncos country is about the history of the game. And I'm excited about it. And I'm excited about wearing the blue and orange. I'm proud to be a Bronco. It's an honor. It's a gift. I'm super excited about it. And I'm super excited about winning. I came here for one reason. 
came here for one reason, and that's to win. And that's what I believe in. So every day, what you're going to get from me is that mentality. You're going to get that juice. You're going to get that energy. You're going to get that focus. And we're going to do it together. All the guys back there, we're going to do it together. That's what it takes. But we're here for one thing, and it's to win. It's to win at the highest level often. And I'm excited about it, and I'm excited about the journey. And uh, Broncos country, let's ride. All right, that was Russell Wilson speaking for the first time since that mega trade from Seattle to Denver. Uh, Pete almost fell asleep during it. But I, I think, Brady, you thought it was pretty interesting because you knew a lot of the guys he was referencing. You, you were there with the Seahawks ahead of that 2013 season. Yeah, uh, that Super Bowl season. And one of the things he kind of touched on and talked about, I think one of the reasons that that particular time with that team and really that, that span was so special was just the way those guys came out and prepared and practiced and competed. And I feel like, you know, he brought a lot of it because of the prior baseball experience playing professionally. He brought a lot of that, you know, coming in as a rookie in 2012. I wasn't there yet, but when I signed and I talked to John Schneider about this, one of the things he said to me is like, he's different. He's much more mature, much more wise beyond his years because he's already played a professional sport. He understands the model of coming out every single day to work and what that means, what that looks like. And, and he, along with that defense, the Legion of Boom at that time, they really set the tone with the way they practiced. Every day was a dogfight out there in practicing. And you knew just being there that if you were going to be able to make that roster, that roster was going to do something special. And obviously they were able to accomplish something extremely special in, in, in Seahawks history. Uh, but this is a new journey for them. And this is an organization that, unlike Seattle, is used to success. That is the expectation. When he got to Seattle, <clears throat> they didn't know what they had. They ended up having lightning in a bottle. With that defense, the combination of being at two Super Bowl trips, winning one. With Denver, that's what they've been missing, is him, this quarterback. So the expectation's out there. That's why he wanted to go there. But now the pressure's on. And now it's time to see if they can actually go out there and win. From 14% chance to make the postseason to 44%, according to Sportsline, just with the acquisition of Russell Wilson. But Pete also getting Randy Gregory to uh, go back on his deal with the Cowboys and come to Denver as well. Yeah, one quick thing about Russell Wilson. Chris, remember when you were that wild child back in Iowa and Bad school boy. let out and you felt so free, you ran through the cornfields, mm -hmm. you, you created havoc because you were a tough guy and a bad guy and all that? Well, he's free. He's finally free of Pete Carroll. He's going to be able to throw the football and play fast and play loose and play up-tempo. That's the best thing about him going to Denver. When you look at this offense, they're going to throw it around. They're going to be a team that likes to get the ball down the field. I know he did it some, but he didn't ever really get the chance to dictate tempo on a continual basis in Seattle. He will in Denver. I love what the Broncos have done. You get Gregory. Again, we talk about being able to knock the other guy's quarterback down. The Broncos have had an outstanding, outstanding offseason. You know, to Pete's point, that's one of the most important things, too, utilizing home field advantage, playing at altitude. You get teams coming in there, and you get his ability to scramble around. You play a little up-tempo. It is a huge advantage, especially in the fourth quarter, second half, when teams get worn down playing at altitude. Yeah, you were at both those places. I mean, yeah. Seattle is looked at as maybe the best home field advantage in the league the because of how loud it right, is. Denver, right. Denver, well, Denver, Denver, not Denver. only is it loud, yeah. but it, it's also a mile high. Oh, and you feel it. I mean, you get in there, and I remember any time you'd go away for a period of time, you'd come back. You'd start working out, sort of train, get yourself back in, in good shape. It was hard. It gets harder to recover the longer you're working out, the longer you're playing. That's where you notice you'd start to you know, pull away from teams in the second half. And that's what's so special about Russell Wilson. He's always been clutch in the fourth quarter, but his ability to run and scoot around and create some plays, especially up-tempo like Pete was talking about, it will put a lot of pressure on their opponent. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.